So how did you discover this format of eight feet by five feet? And why do you why did you set apart making that the distinctive scale of your paintings? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my paintings pretty much these days are eight feet by five feet. They have been more or less that size for I don't know for maybe eight years or something like that. Uh, firstly, I think I became I came on to that size because kind of practically, by some convenience, it's probably the biggest size I can sort of manage with. Meaning by that I can get it out the door, I can get it into other in through other doors. We can put them in a van for transportation, and. Um, For working at them, it, it's about the biggest size that I can kind of stretch to with, with my arms out without having to move around or go up and down a ladder, which I don't really want to be doing. So if I stand in one place pretty much and move around a little bit, I can sort of get to those points. Since I work very quickly and very sort of physically, um, it's important that I can do that. So uh, those would be kind of practical reasons. Um, I think another reason why I'm continuing mainly to work within that size is that um, the space within the rectangle or the square or whatever of the of the of the painted surface, of course, for most painters or for me anyway, is uh, terribly important. One of the things I'm mostly dealing with in my paintings is is space. Um, but whenever you come to an unfamiliar scale of working within, then you're conscious of the space and you've got to then find your way around that space or become familiar with that space, which is yet one more problem you've got to deal with. Um, over the number of years that I've been working within this 8 by 5 feet kind of size, I now sort of feel natural with it. So whenever I start a new painting, I'm not, I don't really think about the space anymore. I, I, I take it for granted that I know that space. So I've got a whole lot of other things to worry about, but not that. And, and that, that I kind of think one less will be fine, you know. So that's why I, I, I kind of am pretty much sticking with that space. I, I sometimes do paintings that are bigger and bigger or smaller than that too, but uh, pretty much I am sticking with that for the moment. Who knows what happens in the future, but uh, I'm familiar with it, so it'll, it'll be fine. Okay. So... Have you... Uh have you ever thought about making diptychs? Yeah, I did two last year. There was two in that show at uh, Tanya's place at Gasher Gunner. And uh, yeah, they were double the size then, so it was two 8x5s pushed together. And, and that was that was fine too, you know. I sort of um, I sort of took to it okay, I think, in those two paintings. I don't think they're bad paintings, you know. Um, after doing it, I think it maybe seemed a bit superfluous. Uh, I, I don't think that they were better paintings than, than the 8 by 5 feet ones. They're just twice the size. I don't really feel that there was any more in them that was in, them was in the, than the 8 by 5 feet ones. So after doing two and seeing them in, seeing them in the show, I haven't felt like doing any more ones that size since then. Um, I think the 8 by 5 feet ones are actually a bit more intense than the ones that are double the size. At the same time the bigger space I felt was maybe a little bit more liberating for me actually in some way. I don't want to say anything would be easier because it's never easy but somehow it seemed a little bit more liberating or something to work in that bigger space, but as I say, it just didn't really seem that there were better paintings than the ones that were 8x5. 
and uh, you know I use so much paint and stuff I don't need to don't need to use more of it unless I need to use it you know so uh, yeah for the moment I think let's take with it by five I don't know diptychs or triptychs in the future I don't know we'll see you know? do you um, do you make your own supports not anymore, you know. I used to. Um, I used to work on canvas, and I would buy uh, the woods. Really made, but well, I used to make my own stretchers. In fact, too, I made them so badly that uh, first chance I got a little bit more money, I would start to buy the ready-made ones, um, and that was that was better. But then uh, I would put canvas on them and. The canvas just it just wasn't strong enough, you know. Um, I would uh, put so much paint on it and, and just treat them so roughly and stuff that uh, they would go all baggy in the middle, and, and it was always a problem. Or the stretchers would sometimes break or something, you know. So for the last uh, more than two years now, I've been getting boards made, and I get the wood guys in the corner to do it. And price-wise, I think it's maybe even a little bit cheaper than than, uh, than than buying stretcher bars and canvas and doing it that way and we have been trying our best to develop the best kind of design for it so it's strong but light and that kind of thing we're always we're always trying to do that a bit differently um, but we've got kind of something that seems to work well enough and I just say they're just the corners, so they you know we just I just pick them up and walk in the block with them. It's easy. Uh, so no. Um, yet again, it's not something that interests me. So if I can get somebody else to do it, I do the bit that I'm interested in. You know.